Great. Welcome everyone. Uh, today we're going to talk about the announcements uh, that made uh, at Microsoft Builds. I think many of us already knew there is something new called uh, Microsoft Fabric, the new kit in the block. And I'm privileged today to have Paul uh, again for the second time. OK, we are uh, all ears. Paul, thank you. Thank you very much. So uh, again, my name is Paweł Potosiński, working at Microsoft. Uh, I, I'm not sure if it's still Azure Synapse Analytics team, because right now most of our folks are focusing on Fabric as well. But again, uh, the team is called Intelligence Platform, and we are working on several products from Microsoft. Uh, Azure Synapse is one, Power BI is another one, Data Factory is uh, the third one, and right now also Fabric, which is uh, in public preview currently, is another product that uh, is under our umbrella. Actually, Data Explorer is also in our in our team. So there's a bunch of things. I'm, I'm located in Warsaw, uh, in Poland, so Europe. Uh, so it's 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 early afternoon for me. So good evening, good afternoon, good morning, everyone, and. Uh, I will be talking uh, mostly about fabric, but before I go into fabric, just uh, you know, bunch of a bunch of uh, news from from Microsoft Build Conference, because hey, this this session title is announcements from Build, so I just wanted to be fair, and not to spend the whole hour for for fabric only. I will spend almost an hour. So if you want to find out what's new, uh, what's what was announced at Build uh, last week. You can go to aka.ms slash build dash book dash of dash news. I should probably paste this link into the uh, into the chat window. I will do it later on, but you that will lead you that will that will take you to the book of news, which is an online website where you can simply go and check everything that was announced at build. So for example, if I if I if I was about to refer about what's new in Azure data. You can jump to this uh, to, the, to this specific chapter, and you will find out that Microsoft Fabric has been actually announced at this conference, as well as some goodies for Power BI, uh, including Copilot uh, in in preview for Fabric, uh, but also in public preview for some some functions, some features of Power BI, like uh, like DAX suggested measures. Uh, also, uh, notice that for Power BI, there are some, some, I would say, quite massive announcements like Power BI Desktop Developer Mode, which means that from now on, you will be able to save Power BI files, not just in PBIX, but also as a project that will separate your uh, reporting layer from the data set. And that makes things super easy in terms of, uh, you know, Git, Git integration, CI CD processes. And uh, and source code managing. So, so actually, uh, I'd say again, I I want to highlight that Fabric is just one of the announcements. Uh, probably the biggest, if you ask me about uh, about data data stack at, of Microsoft. But at the same time, if you're Power BI uh, geek, then probably this one will be uh, super interested for you. Interesting for you. Also, I wouldn't under <laughs> underestimate things we announced in AI. Uh, if you go to if you go to AI, you will see that there are lots of things related to, of course, LLMs, so large language models, but also to uh, responsible AI. So again, take your time, go to this uh, single link, aka.ms slash build book of news, and check check what's uh, what's interesting in, the, in there. In if, if you are more if you are more uh, general, not just data, then probably you will find more uh, more features that are super interesting for you. And now I'm switching to Fabric because for me that's that's news number one. So uh, so let me just jump into this specific announcement. I will try to elaborate on what it is and also show you this product in action uh, to give you some high overview of uh, and just first experience of how this how this thing looks like and how how you may work and uh, and test it actually. So um, if you want to connect with me, I'm available at uh, Twitter and in uh, LinkedIn. Uh, feel free to subscribe to my LinkedIn newsletter. I'm sharing some news from Azure Data and Power BI World every single month. Um, other than that, uh, 
just feel, feel free to connect to my network. That's that's basically it. So um, again, the purpose of the session is, is to introduce you to Microsoft Fabric. If you if you have any question during the meeting, uh, please feel free to ask. I will try to also do some Q&A at the very end of the session. But uh, yeah, you feel free to interrupt if you find that something is not that obvious. So let's start uh, with uh, why actually Fabric was created. So behind Microsoft Fabric, there is a very specific need of people working with data. Um, please simplify. I want to be a CDO, Chief Data Officer, not a CIO, Chief Integration Officer. And this is actually the authentic CDO quote from one of the Microsoft biggest customers. And this quote actually reflects the, the feedback we often get from other customers. So in difficult, well, if we are in, in kind of econ uh, difficult economic conditions and the customers are uh, you know, a bit of tired of paying tax of extensive infrastructure, including cloud infrastructure, as well as its integration. If you look at how analytical projects look like, integration is a, is a significant part, significant investment. Now, analytics have, it, it has a, a actually fairly predictable template for building solutions and running projects. So it starts with, you know, integration of data from very various sources. Then data uh, is collected for analytics and often uh, ends up in a data lake especially when uh, right now we are talking about analytical solutions built using cloud technologies. Then when we do data engineering to make the data, uh, you know, take shape and quality for serving this data to, to the users. Finally, we serve the data, uh, whether user using data warehouses or lake houses, so that users can consume uh, the data in business intelligence tools and get information to support their business decisions. Over time, there may be a need to analyze data in near real time uh, or implement projects using data science to enrich the data. Also, it would be good to have data management, data governance and management to have control over where the data flows to, where sensitive data or data covered by laws or regulations are, is located, how systems and elements of analytics, analytical solution uh, are related, correlate to each other. So. Pretty much, pretty much complex stuff. Now, Microsoft seems to have all the products that do all these. Uh, so we can we can make classic architecture for analytics, right? With Microsoft products. What's more, we have all the elements in the form of platform as a service uh, offering services which remove significant part of configuration from users, especially at the infrastructure level. And yet, building an analytical solution uh, is, not, is not that easy at all. If you, if you, if you, if you try to build an uh, analytical solution, an end-to-end -end solution, then you probably know it. And what actually makes this analytical solution complex? Well, first of all, we have many different products with different Sorry, with different user interfaces and different APIs. And um, there are usually products that use different data formats, sometimes Microsoft proprietary formats. Those are products working in both serverless and, and uh, not serverless mode. For example, you have to sometimes provision some cluster. We have a mix of platform as a service solutions, services, and Power BI, which is actually software as a service solution. We combine those two. We even combine PaaS, SaaS, and infrastructure as a service because sometimes you do have to put virtual machine in your architecture. It's quite often. Now, we also have different, uh, you know, different business and licensing models. And uh, I'm, I'm, I'm sometimes joking that even licensing of Power BI on its own uh, can be a matter of, uh, you know, PhD thesis. So you probably know best. And all that requires, you know, expert knowledge, <laughs> and uh, which is good actually because because you may find you may find yourself an expert. But that makes an in this integration effort quite significant. And this, at the same time, it actually rises the cost of the solutions for analytics. So to wrap it up, simplification is really needed. 
And that's why we brought Microsoft Fabric. So at the build, we announced the public preview of Microsoft Fabric. So what is Fabric? Fabric is a unified platform that provides everything. At least that's what I that that's what we think. Uh, everything that organization may need for data analytics, from data integration and data lake to business user working with Office. Um, Fabric includes things like data integration, data engineering, warehousing, data science, real-time analytics, and BI. So pretty much end-to-end -end, uh, stack for analytics, and even more. I will tell you about uh, about this in a second. Now, the whole solution, Fabric, is delivered as a single software as a service product, which is a similar kind of solution to Power BI. It provides automatic integration, automatic optimization, common architecture, common baseline of the architecture, and central man management, and the same user interface for all roles and workloads in the analytical project. You may consider it as very similar to what we have in Microsoft Office. Excel and PowerPoint, you know, they serve for something else. They are, they, they, they are applications for different purposes. Yet, many activities in both, in both products, Excel and PowerPoint, user performed using the same way. You know, spell checking, copying and pasting, text formatting, and, and even more. Both programs can store, can share the same foundations, like, for example, storing the data in OneDrive or using Microsoft information protection for putting sensitive labels. So thanks to this, that we have a single user interface, knowing one part of the system, so in Office, knowing Excel, brings you closer to PowerPoint. You, you have you have a lower barrier, lower entry barrier, lower learning curve. So we want to have the similar effect in Fabric. So if you look at Fabric, we, we build this platform on four pillars. So first, Fabric provides a complete analytics platform in a software as a service model from data integration through data engineering up to the business user. And it makes easy to use and allows and allows uh, all the users in the in the in the analytical projects to achieve results quickly. Second pillar: Fabric workloads all the workloads uh, work with one leg, which is a platform central data leg, and that minimizes the data management time and effort because we eliminate data movement and duplication across the whole platform. I will tell you more about one leg later during this session, but all the workloads store data in a single central store, let's say storage layer. Also, Fabric is using uh, open data format such as Delta format, uh, and is open to which is open to you know third-party integrations. And uh, and we we actually want this platform to be open on every single layer of the solution. The third pillar is to empower every business user. So, you know, after all, all this data, data warehouses, data science projects, they are meaningless if we don't give data and information to people who need them to make business decisions. So we want to empower every, every single business user. We bring lots of lots of stuff in there. You will see uh, that also in a moment. And last but not least, you know, Fabric was designed with uh, the era of AI in mind. Uh, we are undoubtedly in this in this this area, uh, you know, surrounded by all those uh, open AIs, etc. So as the platform develops, you should expect more and more AI-based features like Copilot. And no, this sentence was not generated by ChatGPT. So to wrap it up, the principles of Fabric are this: complete analytics platform covering all analytical workloads served as a software as a service model and centrally managed. Lake centric platform using one lake as a central data repository elim that eliminates the need of you know having copies of data. Um, platform fully integrated with application uh, application ecosystem for the business user. So you will see you, you see that in Power BI you have integration with you know Microsoft Office Teams etc uh, etc et right so this is pretty much the same continuation of this strategy and also uh, when you ask about the ai you will see lots of things like copilot helping people to uh, develop code 
even produce Power BI reports in the future. Uh, so you will, I, I would say, I would say we will be talking more uh, and writing more uh, in natural languages uh, rather than than you know writing writing sophisticated code. Of course, if you if you're uh, if you want code based approach, you still are good to go. Okay, so uh, Fabric comes with uh, seven what we called experiences. You can also consider them as personas or workloads. Six of those uh, experiences are currently available in public preview, but let, let me go through them one by one. So first of all, we have data factory. It's not Azure data factory. It's just data factory in Fabric. It's actually similar to data factory. You are uh, building data integration uh, using pipelines, which are known from Azure data factory, but also data flows generation too, which, which are a continuation of data flows that you may know from Power BI. So thanks to this, people with different experiences, Azure versus Power BI, can implement data integration. There are four workloads with Synapse in the name, which is Microsoft Synapse, not Azure Synapse. So we have Synapse Data Engineering, which is where data engineer work, works with Spark. And I would say it's a serverless Spark experience because you don't spin up any cluster. You just simply work with notebooks or Spark jobs on top of some compute power. Um, then you have data science, Synapse data science. This is a corner for data scientists writing code, but also uh, you know working with notebooks, but also wanting to uh, implement full MLOps processes for their own models, or maybe easily integrate uh, ready-to-use models like cognitive services or uh, large language models from OpenAI uh, service uh, into their state data science solution. There is also Synapse data warehouse one. SQL experience, not two serverless versus dedicated SQL pool like we had in Synapse. One SQL engine that implements warehouses, as simple as that. There is real-time analytics, which is for uh, both real-time but also observation analytics. You will see that custo elements like KQL database sits there, but also it, it can easily connect to things like event hubs to process streams of data. So when you have uh, some requirements for low latency or uh, you know data coming in structured and semi-structured data uh, data formats. You will you will make use of this, and of course there is Power BI, which is this. Uh, it does need explanation from me. It's the same Power BI as before, but also supported by all the, all the goodness of co-pilots and everything that we put uh, into the game. The seventh uh, the seventh experience is called Data Activator. It used to be called Reflex, but it's called Data Activator, and it's actually uh, coming soon. In short, I will not I will not be talking about this one because you will you will not be able to test it right now in public preview. Just to tell you, it's all about triggering actions. For example, in uh, you know sending emails, starting workflows, uh, triggering actions in Power Platform applications based on the events detected in. Uh, during the analysis. So if if I see, for example, that some threshold is uh, you know uh, is uh, is met by, by some KPI, I can start some action. So which which is kind of you know going from insights to action, but in real time. Okay. Um, there is also this concept of having uh, having lots of things. Um, uh, in common or let's say unified. So we have common storage for workloads in one lake. We have one trial for our workloads. You just start one trial and have all workloads available for you. You have one sign-on experience. You have the same user experience for all experiences for all workloads. You have organization of all the items, lake houses, pipelines, everything in workspaces, just as you know it from Power BI. You have one CI-CD process, you have one security model and you have central monitoring and management. So pretty much everything is unified. Now, the best part of it is that it's satisfied. So it sits on the service that actually covers the, the, the whole complexity is covered by um, software as a service layer. So you have some, some level of control over what's going on in the platform, in infrastructure, which which versions of runtime in Spark you you may be running, but but by design it should be like that. First of all, 
it should allow you to sign up very quickly and get quick, quickly results. Five by five stands by five seconds to sign up, five minutes to wow. Okay, we want that to be uh, a solution of pain points rather than generator of another of another set of pain points for you. Now uh, we want the we want you to go successful with analytics out of the box, which means that there is just a minimum minimal set of knobs to turn on and and uh, maybe play with to optimize things. Thing, things in the lake houses, warehouses, and everything you you will see in in uh, fabric should be auto optimized. That's that's the approach and the uh, centralized uh, centralized auto administration just to make sure that we still can keep up with you know single version of truth, single pane of administration glass, right? Now, um. I'm, I mentioned one one lake. So what is one lake? One lake is actually built on on the foundation of Azure Data Lake Storage Generation Two. It aims to provide you a single data lake service without need to build to build it yourself. So you have one one lake for the whole organization for the whole tenant. It doesn't mean it's just it's a single storage because under the hood we may spin up more storages, but you will, you will not see that. For for you using using Fabric, one lake is just one storage layer, and every single word that writes writes and reads data to this uh, to this uh, storage layer. So you have single unified logical data lake for the whole organization. It's not it's not it's it's not it's not that obvious, but you will see that in a second. This actually guarantees things like uh, we want to keep the copies of data keep, uh, at minimum. So ideally, one copy of data should be uh, within the whole platform, and all the all the analytical engines should share the same copy of data, right? Also, um, so again, every fabric tenant will have exactly one one leg, not two, not zero, just one, and no no infrastructure to manage. Okay. Yes, Khalil, thank you. One drive for your data. That's my next slide, <laughs> or maybe not the next, but uh, yeah. One drive for your data is actually even more because you may search for one lake, one lake uh, file explorer, which is an application that you may install on your laptop that will allow you to work with one lake just as like with one drive. You can. See the folders. You can upload the data, download the data, synchronize the data, everything. Right now, one lake is not just about the storage because it is compute that powers analytical solutions and experiences in Fabric. Compute is completely separate from storage in Fabric, and separation of compute and storage is not is not is not a new concept. But Fabric does not just give one multi-purpose compute engine for analytics. You have you know uh, different things like, for example, Spark for playing with data engineering. You have T-SQL language for playing with data warehouses or going to the lakehouse data using SQL experiences. You have KQL for playing with observation analytical analytics. Doesn't really matter if you want to play with T-SQL or Spark, you're good to go. But the data sit sit in the sits in the same storage foundation, so you can access the same data using different experiences at any time. Also, what is important, it is built, as I mentioned, on top of Azure Data Lake Storage Generation 2. It's not the same storage as Azure Data Lake Generation 2 because it may, it's, it's a bit more complex, but the API you can use is the same. So you can access one lake just like you normally access Data Lake Storage in Azure. So. Imagine that you can write the data using, for example, Spark and the notebook, and then access the same data using your data warehouse using T-SQL. Isn't that beautiful vision? OK. Um, also, um, you will see over time, sorry, one, one more thing. Um, also, you will, you will see uh, over time that we will be working. It's on. It's actually roadmap thing. We will be working on on things called one security. So you will have a shared security model which you will define in one lake. So everything that is related to 
access control over data will be controlled using a single a uh, single experience, single pane of glass, instead of going from between different elements of the architecture. So uh, things like objects, object level security, that would be that will be implemented uh, on top of one lake. So no need to, to specify those uh, elements of security in multiple places in the platform, okay? Now, there is also a concept of shortcut, which is super important if you look at how we play with data in Fabric. Shortcut is nothing more but just a symbolic link. So imagine just like Windows and Linux operate with shortcuts, you can create a shortcut to data that physically exists in Fabric, but sits somewhere else, and it was not created by the workload you are currently working with. So for example, today, uh, if you have tables in data warehouse, which you want to make available alongside, uh, you know, other other tables or files in the lake house, you will need to copy the data uh, out of the warehouse. With one leg, you simply create a, sh a shortcut in the lake house, pointing to the table sitting in the warehouse, and you're done. So that's that makes things super easy, and most of all, it it doesn't is it, it actually prevents you from copying data around the solution. So you don't have you don't have to put many copies of the same data pretty much everywhere. Now, what is also gr great in this feature is that it, not, it does not limit you to only fabric features and the data that sits in one leg. You can easily combine the data from existing storages, external storages like Azure Data Lake Generation 2 or Amazon, uh, Amazon S3. In the future, you will see also investments in Google, Google Cloud Storage. So imagine that you can virtualize all your storages and go, go to, those, to the data that sit in the storages uh, using shortcuts in, in one leg without any, again, without copying the data into Fabric even. So I will show you that in a second. Now, there are more disruptive features than just one leg. Um, there's one one groundbreaking feature for Power BI developers as well, and this is called Direct Leg. So far, we've been using two modes, two modes when connecting to the data sources when, from Power BI datasets. One direct query mode, and second import query mode, import mode. So when I want to get good performance, I go with import mode because the data is cached and optimized for BI queries and it, act, it actually does not query the underlying data source. If, if I want to have the most actual data, I go with direct query uh, mode, but then you know the performance may be not that great because it's actually uh, it depends on the underlying uh, backend layer like data warehouse, for example. So typically you have to invest a lot of time and effort in optimization to make it working. Why not? use direct lake. So direct lake is actually based on loading uh, delta format files or parquet, delta parquet format files directly from data lake or one lake without querying anything beyond. So, you know, having delta format is a smart move because you have columnar storage, storage format, which allows VertiPack to get the data, a subset of data, not the whole data set, or even not partition, but just, just a bunch of columns and maybe limited to some, some, some portion of this column that minimize the, the amount of data stored in the memory. So it makes things faster. It, it works like an import mode, but still it can query the data that sits in the in the one leg. So actually. Yes, import performance without importing data. That's exactly how we used to call. I think Christian Wade has very similar de definition. So to make the long story short, it actually eliminates the import requirement. You don't have to refresh your data sets. And, and, and this mode will see the data that sit in, uh, in uh, your lake house. Currently, lake, lake house in the future will, see, will also support uh, data warehouses in Fabric as well. And and see the whole data that you that you have uh, sitting in your in your storage, just like that. Okay. So before I go into uh, call to action and share some links, I will show you Fabric in action. 
so live demo, keep your fingers crossed. It's a public preview product. <laughs> but uh, what what could be better than just you know purely going with a demo? So this is Fabric. What differentiates Fabric from Power BI is actually this little icon in the bottom left corner. You will see Power BI icon, then you're in Fabric. It is a, it's actually a switcher between different expediences. So you can switch between Power BI, Data Factory, Synapse expediences. In the future, you will see Data Activator as well. You can also click Microsoft Fabric, which will take you to this nice home screen, as we call it. And using home screen, you can also navigate between different experiences. But everything is in the same user experience, the same portal, which is Power BI portal basically. Uh, so it's not it's not it's not super complex to navigate between waters. Now, before I start to you know present some demo, let me just uh, give you some overview of how you configure Fabric when you when you have existing Power BI tenant. So first of all, you have to go to admin portal. And then you should have uh, two options that uh, that you should uh, that you should focus on. One is called um, this Microsoft Public Preview. So this actually allows you to um, maybe like this. This actually allows you to uh, enable Fabric experiences, not just Power BI but also Data Factory and Synapse uh, in your tenant for the entire organization or specific specific security groups. So my advice, if you don't want everyone to use Fabric or or you, you know you have to you have to somehow limit the, the amount of people uh, accessing other workloads than just Power BI, create security groups in Azure Active Directory and then put security groups um, in in the select in the selection that will be that would be good. That's that's number one. So you should enable this. Uh, the experience may be a bit different. You will, you may see a checkbox in here because we, for for existing tenants, uh, we don't enable Fabric by default, but we will enable Fabric by default if you don't click the checkbox that sit in the admin portal uh, before July first. So if you're a Power BI administrator, I encourage you to go to admin portal and check your settings in Fabric. Microsoft Fabric preview option. That's number one. Number two, if you decide to open Fabric for the users, even for a limited limited set of users, the second option that you may find useful is this. Users can try Microsoft Fabric paid features, which means that actually users that are enabled in this option, for, for, for me it's the entire organization, can start Fabric trial. What does it mean to start Fabric trial? If you if you have Fabric enabled and you create a workspace and try to create any Fabric specific item like a lake house, you actually will get a dedicated to your assigned to your user, but uh, also for use for other people capacity, which is similar to Power BI Premium capacity. So if I go to capacity settings, I started a trial. I have my trial capacity visible here. That's my capacity, right? This one. As you can see, there are other users who have already started the capacities as well. But also, if I if I grant them access to workload to the workspaces that are covered by my own trial capacity, they should be good without spinning up additional trial capacities. Okay. Now notice that this capacity is is not that small because it's 64 capacity units. We translate capacity units to vcores on a one eight eight to one ratio. So this is actually P1, eight cores, eight vcores, right? Which is quite quite a lot for a single user, right? Um, now let's go to some practical exercises with Fabric. So when you know how to enable a Fabric trial and start with it. The first thing you need to, to do is actually create a workspace. So I will create another workspace. I will call it demo because it's for demo. And now two things. One, if you click advanced, you should click advanced and make sure that your workspace is either backed by trial of fabric or it is assigned premium capacity. That will also do the thing, right? 
Uh, over time, you will be able to assign fabric capacities, which, which will be available to buy in M365, but also in Azure. So you will be able to buy uh, in Azure capacities of fabric that are good to, to pause and resume and also do some reservation stuff. OK, so trial, that's my option. And also notice this one, domain. It's a new feature. I think it's also for Power BI, but in general, we we add additional abstraction layer over workspaces so we can group workspaces in logical containers called, called domain which make things easier when you need to you know uh, allow people business users to search for specific domains like finance versus uh, sales versus something else so this actually is helpful uh, for the purpose of uh, running data mesh model for example so let me create this demo, uh, demo, uh, demo workspace. Now, the first thing I would encourage you to go is to create a lake house. Now, experiences, if you switch between experiences from Power BI to, for example, data engineering, that will take you to this screen, which allow you to create spe workload specific items like lake house for data engineering. Notice that always you see the context of uh, the workspace you are working on here. So I'm in a demo work in demo workspace right now. So let me create a lake house. Well, let's call it lake house. Okay, so what is lake house? Lake house is a combination of two things: storage or del del or actually data lake. So you have folders with files, etc., but also uh, it also serves as a kind of database. So you can have tables, and that's why you can see two areas of the lake house. Each lake house has the same structure. It has two areas. One is called files, and it's for so-called unmanaged part of the lake house. You put files in here, files that you download from your source systems, files that that you may upload manually from your PC. So it's uh, you know it's it's it's, a, it's actually a data data lake. But also notice that you have the second layer called tables or the second folder called tables. Here, Lakehouse will create tables for you. Most of those tables you want to have in Delta format because Delta format is actually used broadly by the whole ecosystem, the whole ex the whole the whole fabric fabric platform for all workloads. Also. If you don't specify tables to be in Delta format or, or somehow you will create tables based on other formats, they will not be visible in direct lake mode. That's the general general note. So the approach is this. When I want to load something, some data and then play on top of this data, use some do some experiments, transform the data, I load the data into files. OK. Let me create a folder or two for my data. I will have uh, some New York City taxi data, so I will call the folder. I will create a folder called trip, and I will create a folder called um, payment type. Okay. Now let me do several things. For for trip, I will try to ingest the data from the internet. For payment type, I will upload the data from my local PC. And also, I will use the third table that will be loaded in a different way. So first of all, let me load the trip data. So for that, I will use TLC trip records data. I typically base my Synapse demo on that. I have, you know, there is a single website where you can simply grab a link to a single single parquet file and just load this file to your to your uh, system. Or you may download multiple files if you want. So big data is on the way. I will just upload, I will just download one file to my lake house. To do that, I can use different methods of getting data. So Data Factory offers pipelines and data flows as two major features for uh, you know working with data. Typically, pipelines. Um, let me create a pipeline, and this will be in just uh, RIP. Okay. So pipeline, it's actually something very, very similar to what we have in Azure Data Factory or, or Synapse pipelines, right? It's for ingestion of data. Let me just go and create. I hope this will not take forever. 
again demo of gods with me okay so let me let me pick the connector to http because that's a website but you can also use sample data as you probably noticed and i will create a new connection just put the link here no authentication because it's anonymous uh, it's already exists so i will probably um i'll probably give it another name let me rename this connection to trip file okay you see that I, I i tried this demo before now there's nothing to configure in this one here i have to specify the data type because it's just an url so uh, it could be pretty much everything so i know it's a parquet file and i can even go and preview the data so i can see that hey there is some data to download cool now i will put this in the, my existing lake house and i will put this in files i intentionally put it in files to show you the second step that may be transformation now I will put it in the existing trip folder. Okay, and I will give my file the same name as, uh, as it was on the website. Okay, okay, cool. Start data transfer immediately, save and run, boom. As complex as this. So downloading, downloading a file using uh, this uh, simple single copy task in a pipeline is just a matter of few clicks and you're, you should be good now notice that here i have i have the same or very 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 much the same experience as in azure data factory so i i can actually pre i can review how the process of downloading this file looks like uh, from you know the tool perspective uh, okay so let's switch to uh, the lake house for a second I hope this uh, this will take no longer than two minutes to download this file, and I will also upload some data into my payment type folder to have some add some more data. So I just simply go click on those three dots uh, on the folder, and hey, upload files, as simple as that. Now I have my payment type final CSV file, which is nothing but a simple CSV with just a few few rows. I can even show you this file looks like this well nothing very interested interesting just i would say it's kind of dimensional dimension a table for my analytics it will be useful for me and now the good thing is that if you go to the files section of your lake house and you have some files that you want to move to to the tables the simplest way to do that is just use right click load to tables but i will use another method I will open a new notebook, which is Python, Python, uh, or sorry, it's it's actually Jupyter notebook very much. So you can play with Python, SQL, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. And I will do this. I will use my payment type CSV file. So come on, drag and drop it onto my notebook. Notice the experience. I get some code. So it's super easy to uh, actually load this this csv file into my data frame sitting in the in the spark spark experience but there is no cluster and i will not display instead i will write this data in the specific format which will be as you may expect delta because delta is the most sexy format for me in the lake house and i will save to table um which we'll call payment Uh, format not form. I, I was actually surprised because no intelligence showed up, but this should be good. And now, let me see if my uh, if my ingestion finished. Yes, I succeeded. So that should result in the new file in my lake house trip. Yes, I have my file from the internet. Good to go. Let's switch to the notebook. Notice that I'm doing multitasking, switching between different different uh, different items. Let's run this one. So if you worked previously with Synapse, starting a session of Spark takes three to four minutes at minimum. 
standard, standard abroad. So let's wait those three minutes. Just kidding. It should go 10 seconds. Boom. You have a session, you have a session that is, whoa, spin out. Save the table. Hmm. What is wrong with this? Um, no attribute save the table. Boom. Uh, okay, that should be probably better here. Uh, right. Uh, format. Say S table, you know. You, you always learn, but with intelligence, that's not that that's not that complex. Payment time. That should be better. But also notice session started in 10 seconds. No clusters, serverless spark approach. Now the session has already started, so it only executes my code and writes the data into a table. Why I want this in the table? Because I want to query this data and join with other tables. As simple as that. So after this operation, when I refresh my tables, I have my table created. Now for trips, I will do another step. I will use, I will go to Lakehouse and I will try to use the data flow generation tool. You see. So you know data flows. Data flows is pretty much power query in the service. So let me just go and get some data. Um, more fabric uh, lake house. Sorry, lake house. I will take the data from my lake house because I want to take the data from files and move to tables. Let me just go and do that. So here I have my demo workspace, lake house. This is my lake house to select. And there is my table. Uh, sorry, there's my. Um, there's my files. Come on, come on, come on. <clears throat> There's my table that should be in trip. Yes, it's there. So I create. I connect to my existing parquet file that I downloaded from the Internet. And I can play with Power Query, for example, to make uh, some, you know, transformations like uh, changing the data types, removing unwanted columns, etc. Okay. Um, let me just do a couple of things. For example, here I will change the data type to date, and then I will just leave three or four columns no more uh, required. Right. I will just leave vendor ID. Um, this pickup date time will probably be pickup date. Good. Pretty much like you do with Power Query, nothing very sophisticated. So let's select a couple of columns. Passenger count will be good. Trip distance will be good. And maybe total amount. Where is it? I know I could I could just choose choose columns and then remove other columns. Boom. And now. The best part is that I can choose my destination and it's going to be Lakehouse. I'm going to not only transform the data, but also write this data to my Lakehouse. And the table will be called Trip. I also, I can decide how, what to do with data. Is it for append or replace? Uh, let's say append. It's the first file there uh, anyway, but uh, it's, it, it should work, right? Um, so let's save the settings. And now let's publish this. Now, the best part is that you can play with both both items in data factory so i i got i go back to my pipeline and i can create another step called data flow and uh, if i go to settings for this data flow step and hopefully my my data flow is published which should happen in a few seconds um then i should see this 
um, I should see this data flow ready for select. If you somehow don't see this uh, this uh, data flow on the list, my suggestion is to um, is to maybe save the save your pipeline as it is. Okay, and maybe even reopen that for uh, from the workspace just to make sure that uh, the the list of data flows available is refreshed. So I have my ingest strip data pipeline. And now let's try to uh, add data flow settings. Ah, still not there. Come on. Yes, finally there. OK, so we can connect those blocks and I can also one more time execute execute this um, as, 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 as you as you normally ex execute the whole pipeline. That should be good. So. Let me see what I have in my lake house in tables. Um, OK, notebook, uh, data flow. Let's let's refresh the data flow, gen, the data flow uh, that I created. That should actually also create my table, I believe. And when that's finished, I will just see. Uh, I will just see the result. Now, the, there is also one more method to bring the data into the lake house. I mentioned that everything sits in one lake. Imagine I created some other some other lake house or some other data warehouse in the same public tenant, and I know that it exists. I have some vendor table. What I can do is actually go and add a new shortcut in my tables, pointing to something. Um, pointing to something uh, that sits already in my one leg into fabric. So I select my existing, um, for example, my existing blah, blah, blah. Lake house. This is demo. This is demo. But let's let's say this one, this lake house, right? And there is a table called vendor. No copy of data. I just point at the table that exists in any other object, lake house or warehouse, or even maybe that could be KQL database, and I can I can have it here. Interestingly, I can go right now to SQL endpoint that sits over my lake house. So when I create a lake house, actually three objects are created: a lake house, but also SQL endpoint and the default data set that is. Re, that is actually running in direct lake, direct lake mode. So when I go to the lake house uh, SQL endpoint, which is basically SQL experience over my lake house tables, I can go and model just like I do it in Power BI. So for example, I can tell you that hey, you know this payment type in the table of trip. Um, ah, don't have payment type, but this vendor ID is the same as this vendor ID. So let's just create a, a they, let's just create a relationship between those two tables. Boom. And then I can simply run and create a new report on top of this data set actually is data it, there is data set behind the scenes. So I can create a new report. So you can see that going from data to insights here is quite quite good because quite easy because you you just simply go and play with data you load the data there's no no nothing like you know indexing etc and i can simply see for example how many passengers uh you know were uh, were transferred by different vendors as simple as that now to show you the power of direct query i have another example let me i know that i'm running out of time but just just a demo of um direct lake so pretty much the same I did in this workspace. I took a lake house, I loaded some data. This time a bit, a bit more data. Like you will see how many, how many rows. And let's go with this. The I, 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 I used SQL endpoint to create relationships between four tables that exist in this, uh, in this lake house. So the model is very simple. Let me just open that. So the model is just purely star schema, I would say. 
uh, one fact table plus three uh, dimensions. And now let me connect to data set, to this specific data set, uh, sorry, to this specific data set here using the tool that we all love, Power BI Desktop. So from home, let me go to one like data hub. <laughs> what is that thing? Power BI data sets. Let me select my direct leg demo lake house. And I have some tables. So pretty much like direct query mode. And then let's see what happens if I start playing with this data. Let's see uh, passengers. That may take some time for when the, when I when I click it for the first time, but let, let's play further. Let's create some other visualizations, like for example, column chart which will have something else like uh, passengers plus 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 I don't know year maybe slice and dice the data right you can use object object edit as well but uh, let me just use the classical way so when you when you look at this the first time it takes a couple of seconds but then it will just filter the data as ex as expected so we click something happens you just put another another uh, measure like you know this one. Now guess what's that? It's actually the number of rows. So two billion rows. I I haven't refreshed any data set. I haven't loaded anything into import mode. It's just playing with one leg, right? Because of the nature of delta format that is compressed, that is columnar format, it doesn't download the whole data set into the into memory. It just it's just working on subsets of data. The more you click on that, the more it can take into memory because uh, because you just simply point the data that has to be un uh, downloaded. So again, if you reuse the same data in your next visuals or queries, it will use it will use the same uh, the same data sit sitting in the memory. So it will take sub seconds, maybe seconds, even on billion of rows. You know, that's actually quite impressive, I would say. So with that. Uh, I was about to show you even more because this is actually how you can see the data in using Azure uh, Azure Storage Explorer. Yes, you can access it just like uh, normal ADLS storage. And also, I was about to show you that it's super easy to attach uh, data data lake storage from Azure. But hey, we are running out of time, so I will switch to slides because I have some call to action for you. So first of all. Try Microsoft Fabric. Just go to ak.ms try dash fabric and start the trial today, not tomorrow. Now the second thing we need uh, we need community, you know, to be engaged. So if you have questions, go to ak.ms slash fabric community, engage with community, ask your questions. There are Microsoft folks sitting there as well, so you will get your uh, questions answered. There is also a way to share your ideas. If you see that something could work better, or you know there are some things that are missing in the product, make sure you let the team know. And also, if you want to learn from uh, different existing resources, first of all, watch again the videos from Build. Build with Analytics, that's the shortcut for this. Read the documentation. Hey, <laughs> we have pretty much extensive documentation on the product even now in public preview. Read the blogs. If you want to, uh, if you want a quick introduction into every single workload plus one leg, that's the best way to go. And also learn Fabric for free, which is the the the, the whole path, learning path at Microsoft Learn for you available to access for free. Also, uh, I'd highlight that recently, last week, I I posted a single blog post on on the Fabric blog that contains lots of links to MVPs content like you know blogs and YouTubes so you can learn from Microsoft most valuable professionals like Halil uh, from you know first first hands experience they actually participated in private preview of this product okay let's now jump into Q&A I know we are out of time but if you have some 2 3 minutes more I'm happy to answer some questions Thanks a lot, Paul. That was a great uh, demo. Uh, I have one question. Do, do yeah. we, will, we, will we see 
Microsoft public desktop in a year? Uh, why would we? Notice that the, even the trend in Power BI is to put as much as we can into the service. I mean, the whole modeling experience uh, landed in the service last month, right? So I would expect rather the opposite uh, because, you know, Spinning up another desktop is, uh, you know, asking for troubles whenever people from, you know, come with MacBooks, etc. We have the whole thread of why Power BI desktop never landed on MacBooks, and instead of doing another release of desktop for Mac MacBooks, we deliver uh, web experience. And I believe that that's the best approach. Also, uh, one thing that is worth mentioning: most most workloads here in Fabric have. They have APIs that allow to work with uh, external tools like, for example, uh, Visual Studio Code. That's worth mentioning. So again, I wouldn't expect us to go with Fabric Desktop. Rather, uh, it's uh, it may be a bunch of different tools like to tools for developers to support notebooks, etc. Uh, with Copilot extensions, yes, they are coming to uh, Visual Studio as well. But in general, uh, no, I wouldn't expect uh, things for reporting, etc. Power BI Desktop will, will just will just be there for sure. Yeah, yeah. Uh, that, thanks a lot. Will the single products that compose Fabric remain available in the future? Yes. The if you if you go to the um, um, sorry, I, I didn't put the blog of Arun Arun uh, with the announcement. We actually put the straightforward promise. There is nothing. There is nothing happening with Synapse, Data Factory, and Data Explorer, you have standalone products. Even more, we encourage you because the architecture of Fabric is open on every layer, especially on one lake layer. You use not, not only API of uh, you know well-known ADLS, but also Delta format. So you are good to go with a combination of one lake, Databricks for data engineering, and direct lake for you know running your reports. That should work as well. Can I use Power BI Pro version? Yes. Okay. One, one, one more question. So to run Fabric, you need capacities. Power BI capacities, premium capacities, not embedded, not any others, but premium capacities or Fabric capacities. The pricing of Fabric capacities will be announced, I, I believe, uh, the day after tomorrow. But that I, I don't. I don't want to keep this promise. Probably, probably in June. Let's say. So you will be probably satisfied with the entry level. You know, pricing point for fabric capacities, they will be much lower than Power BI Premium. I can tell you that for sure. Uh, I think the, the North Star for us is to get rid of Power BI Pro licenses for fabric. Don't quote me on that, <laughs> but I think I think you won't need Power BI Pro license to, to work with fabric workloads. Um, but again, this is a matter of you know future releases. Right now, you do need Power BI Pro license uh, at, at least to create a workspace, okay? Okay, and other questions from the audience? Don't be shy. Absolutely. I don't know, I don't know everything about Fabric, you know, but uh, what I know I can share. <laughs> or we can take your good questions to my product team uh, and they will solve your issues. Hey, uh, to be honest, pretty, pretty open, you know, this is public preview, so we have just started. There are things that are in the documentation, but you will not see them in the product. Copilot is in private private preview. Data activator is in private preview. Security features will then be for GA. Migration features, yes, we will have migration features for existing customers with Synapse, ADF, etc. They will then be for GA, but it's not now, right? Aurora is ready. Okay, let's let's wait. Thank you. Uh, so holiday, yeah, holiday is coming in July. Thank you very much. <laughs> <laughs> okay, uh, Giuseppe, you raised your hand, I guess. Absolutely, please go. Yeah, go yes, go. yes. Uh, um, what about the the gateways? Because now we have a gateway for um, Power BI and another gateway for the um, uh, data factory. Let's say you will have unified gateways. Fabric will okay. have fabric gateways, basically, or something like that. But, but yes, one, you will one? have. I, I would say this: we may we may put it in a. I don't know really, but we may put it in a separate release or just uh, let's say 
uh, upgrade the naming for existing Power BI uh, Power BI um, uh, Gateway. gateways. Yes, but the, the the rules will be the same. So you know, scaling out and scaling up the, the gateways, uh, installing them somewhere because we somehow we need to reach the the on premises infrastructure for sure. Yes. <laughs> okay. Thank you. Thanks a lot for your question. One question from me, uh, Paul, if you don't mind. Sure. Uh, will we have the same ability? Uh, I mean, I'm talking about the multiple destinations in, in, in Dataflow Gen 2. Uh, will we have the same ability in Power BI Pro Dataflows as well? Uh, <laughs> that's a good question. <laughs> Uh, you probably should ask this question to uh, Jero and then Miguel. Uh, sorry for that, but I, I don't know. I really don't know. Um, but the good I, the good information is we I know that there there is a plan to very very soon release uh, in the documentation a dedicated uh, dedicated pages dedicated pages of on the roadmap and release plans. So if if it's not there, being the integration data integration team on that, they should answer. Okay. Thanks a lot. Any other questions? We already run out of time, but we are happy to answer uh, if you have further questions. Okay. May, uh, maybe later, uh, later after a, a try. <laughs> absolutely. Try it first, then come uh, come back with questions. Uh, ping me on uh, you know LinkedIn if you have any any observations or questions or you need some ex some explanations. I'm free to to take up questions offline, basically. Uh, exactly, and I I recommend everyone to subscribe to uh, Paul's newsletter on LinkedIn. It's a great source for everything for everything as Azure related. The next one will be very much fabric oriented, so you are you're good to go after today's session. And I will share the slides with uh, with Khalil uh, after this session. Okay, thanks a lot, Paul. It was a pleasure for me to host Thanks you a again. lot. Thanks for inviting me. <laughs> Thank uh, you. Okay, Thank you very everyone, much. Uh, have a nice day. See you. Goodbye. Thank you. See you. Thanks.